what do I love about what I do? I love that I get to come to work every day and use my imagination. And, and, and not only that, but I get to work with amazing people. We have such a great time putting this show together. Um, and it's definitely not a vanity project. You know, we're being silly. Um, we're not trying to be cool on the show. Uh, and it's really, we're, we're all there for the purpose of helping kids. So everything that we do, we want to make sure that we're doing to the best of our ability so that the message comes through, whatever episode, whatever it is for that episode. And so it's amazing that we're all there for um, this um, this fantastic purpose to help kids. But then at the same time, we just have such a great time working together. And the fact that I get to use my imagination and be silly and be comfortable being silly with these people, I think is my, uh, my favorite part of the job. That and um, meeting parents and kids who watch the show and just see how appreciative they are um, of the work that we're doing. But those, those are the two uh, best things about my job. It's so interesting to think about like you're teaching kids love and value and other things, but like, you know, some kids might not be getting all this attention at home. So it's really important to, I mean, the work you do is important is what I'm trying to say. I appreciate that. I, it's, it's, it's a really, really wonderful thing to be a part of this show because it is true. You know, some kids don't, aren't able to get this type of attention, not because their parents don't love them, but because their parents are just busy. You know, their parents are trying to support a family and be there for them when uh, things matter for like big events. You know, I, I had the benefit of having my dad stay at home. So when we immigrated to the States, uh, my mom was the one who had the working visa and her hospital was sponsoring her. And um, in order for my dad to continue in his career, uh, his company would have had to move him to Texas. So it would have been single parenting and my dad coming over on the weekends uh, or whenever he could because he traveled so much for work. Um, but he chose to give up his career to keep the family together. Um, and so we had that benefit. A lot of kids and a lot of families aren't able to do that just because it's difficult to make ends meet, period. Um, so if, if there's anything that we can do as a show to help families, especially now that they're working from home, that work-life balance is so off kilter that we've started to come out with more content, whether it be YouTube, podcasts, anything to help. It's what we love to do and we're happy to do it um, because being a parent is hard. I'm not a parent, my sister is, and I don't know how she does it. Can you tell us like your parents or your grandparents or like just a love story in your family that you really admired? One of my mom's friends was being courted by one of my dad's friends. And so that's how they met. Uh, and they met on a Sunday and um, everybody went out to dinner afterwards and they were just kind of like talking. Uh, and it came up in conversation of like, oh, I'm going back home to the Philippines on Friday. And it's like, oh, so am I. I'll see you at the airport. And then so fast forward to Friday, my mom gets there and sees that uh, my soon to be dad uh, didn't go through security. He was waiting for her. And so they went through security together and they were talking and uh, my dad's uh, a smoker. And so he chose not to sit in the smoking section of the plane when he used to be able to smoke on planes so that he could sit next to my mom and talk to her the entire trip back to the Philippines. And I was like, at what point did you, were you like, you know, oh, this, this is like a thing. Like, oh, this is, you know, I was like, of course your dad's handsome, but um, you know, you have these ideas of people in your head of like who you're going to be with. And he was shorter than me. So I just, uh, you know, <laughs> and it killed me. And, um, but she was like, when we were talking, it's like we had been friends forever. Uh, and, um, they had met on Sunday and they hadn't seen each other throughout the week. They met one day, met on uh, re, uh, met again on the plane, talked to each other for that entire trip. And um, my dad, she was like, yeah, your dad had, we were talking and he, he showed me the rings that he bought in Italy that he said that he would give to his wife one day. Um, and I was like, that is so like my dad. <laughs> Tell us a song that you would put on a mixtape or, you know, whatever the equivalent is or playlist for yeah. someone you love or a crush. There are two songs. I was, uh, one is um, Harvest Moon 
by Neil Young. The other is PDA by John Legend. That way you kind of get both sides of the, you know, this isn't just a sweet tape. This is like, I and I love you tape. <laughs> that's not the first tape you make for someone. That's like the third, you know what I mean? That's <laughs> like, the, oh, we're like, this is like going, you know, this is not just like, ah, it's a fun tape. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of that, um, what's a little thing that someone can do for you or has done that like you think is really romantic? Like, oh, my husband put gas in my car or, you know, they always fold my pajamas up or, you know, whatever it is. It's uh, it's something that my wife has done recently. So, and she's done many things in the past that just kind of blow me away as far as like just an everyday thing. Uh, but now that because of COVID, um, she's gone back to school to get her master's online. Um, and because I go to work every day, I wake up around 4.30 uh, to get ready and prepare for the day. And then I leave at 7, 7.40? Yeah, 7.40 to walk to work. Um, and she has never been a morning person. Uh, but because I go to work from kind of like 8 to 5, sometimes 6, she's readjusted her entire schedule so that she sees me when uh, I leave. And then when I come back, like she's done with the work. Um, and, and that's something that, that is, uh, you know, when I realized that's what she was doing, I was like, what are you doing up? You know, uh, that, that, that really got to me because she's, she's not a morning person. And, and that's something that's just, just so small, uh, but uh, definitely hits me. Do you have an everyday object that you really love? Like, this is my favorite pen or like this water bottle is like the best water bottle I've ever had. I am uh, a camera guy. I, I love photography. Uh, and my favorite thing, my favorite camera right now is, um, it's a Fuji camera, uh, but it's a fixed lens camera. So you can't zoom, you can't do anything. Um, and it's an electronic camera, but it has an optical viewfinder so that it's like looking through glass. Yeah, there's, uh, that is probably my favorite thing right now because I'm, I'm always taking pictures of, my, of Amanda and of our dog, Ollie, and of where we are together just to kind of document that. But it's a little bit more purposeful than taking out my phone uh, to take a picture. And so I really value that. And um, it's also waterproof or weather resistant. So I'm not, I'm not so precious with it when it's raining or anything like that. You mentioned, you know, your parents being from the Philippines. Have you been to the Philippines? I think the last time we were in the Philippines, I was in high school before my older sister graduated from high school, um, because that was like maybe possibly the last big family trip we would all go on together. And I think it actually was um, just because of life. Uh, but and then I was supposed to go to the Philippines this past summer, but then everything with the coronavirus happened. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be able to travel relatively soon uh, within the next couple of years. Then I can bring Amanda. And yeah. 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 You know, hopefully <laughs> within the next couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Within the next couple of years. <laughs> um, well, here's the question then. What do you love about being Filipino American? Because I know, especially like I was talking to another friend who's Filipino American. Um, and I, you know, she posted her picture of Josh on, on Instagram and I was like, oh, I'm going to talk to him. And she was like, it's such a big deal <laughs> to have kids see people that could look like them or, or even me as an adult to see people that can look like them. What do you love about being Filipino American? I love that, especially today that I can just be myself. I love that I, I can be myself and, and, and be celebrated for being Filipino American. Um, with our show, we're, it's not colorblind. I, I, I love that. When I got out of school, um, all I wanted to be was ethnically ambiguous so that I could get parts that, were, uh, that weren't stereotypical. Um, and in doing so, I, I kind of denied myself of my identity. Uh, and then when I realized what I was doing, when I, became, when I was surrounded by fellow Asian American actors, um, who are so proud of their specific culture and um, n not apologetic about it at all. That's when I realized, oh, you've, you've been, you know, you've been colorblind to yourself and you haven't really been honest. And that's when things started to turn around. And, you know, it's an amazing time to be alive because I finally feel like we're beginning to celebrate our individuality in media um, and not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera. 
And I think this is, uh, I think that's probably my favorite thing is, you know, kids are growing up and I'll get a text and from a friend or a friend of a friend saying my kid pointed to the screen and said, he looks like me. It's not something that I often felt or did when I was younger in a way that I, um, you know, that wasn't a villain or a character or the butt of the joke. Um, so I think that that's my favorite part. Here's some crush questions. What's an uh, early crush that you can remember from childhood? I remember I, I had the biggest crush on Winnie Cooper from the Wonder Years growing up. Um, that I, 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 it was so random. Um, I can barely remember anything about the show other than I had a huge crush on Winnie Cooper. And our upstairs neighbor, um, in my memory at least, looked like Winnie Cooper. And I remember this really cinematic thing where I saw her walk by the window and it was like the sun was shining. I was like, oh my God, that's Winnie Cooper. And I just had the biggest crush on her. Um, yes, Winnie Cooper. Is there a senior citizen that you have a crush on? Or, uh, or a I don't, like, I, dang. Yeah, I would say I have always had um, a crush. Uh, and senior citizen is such a strange word now because it's like, because it's 2021, everyone takes care of themselves in such a different way than they did when I was a kid. Um, so uh, it was, it's a tie crush between Angela Bassett and uh, uh, Mary Steenburgen. Those are really good. Yeah, when we were growing up, like everyone had those like bubble haircut. Yeah. Like, like the, it doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah, you're like senior citizen. Yeah, now it's just like, oh no, they're just older than I am. Do you have like a bad date story? <laughs> the worst place I'd ever gone on a date was, um, it was, it was a twofer. So like we went out to dinner uh, this person was gluten free. And um, so I was like trying to figure out and it was when gluten free was starting to become more accessible. And Pizzeria Uno, a Chicago Pizzeria Uno uh, had a gluten free crust. So I was like, awesome, let's do that. And um, it, it really, we weren't really vibing. And then uh, I was like, okay, great. So let's you know, let's take this to Barnes and Noble. That way we can kind of like walk around. It's like something. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was so nervous. I'm also somebody that never made the first move, which is why when my wife and I first dated, it kind of fizzled out because she's like, what are we doing here? Do you like me? Like what's, what's happening? Uh, <laughs> but another story. Uh, but then we were walking around uh, Barnes and Noble and um, it was so awkward. She checked her phone a couple of times. Uh, and I was just like, oh yeah, the state's over. We should, we should go home. <laughs> and it was, it was just, it was supremely awkward. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a player or like super smooth or anything like that. Uh, so I, I even still, I'm thinking about it now. I'm still getting nervous. I kind of feel that too. Like I'm kind of getting a little, well, just like the anxiety of even me being in this situation. I'm like, so you like books? Do you know what I mean? Like you read yeah. this book. Like, oh, my, it, was, it was probably the worst decision ever. It's like, well, why did you go to a Barnes and Noble? Uh, so, you know, definitely a my bad. Uh, <laughs> but man, I would never, ever do that again. I think that's why, that's why I knew Amanda was um, different, was I was so nervous. Again, so nervous now that we're on an official date. Uh, and she's like, you're okay. She, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she grabbed my hand. She's like, just talk to me. Um, and that's when I realized, oh, she's so different than anyone I've ever met uh, before. Um, and yeah, so we've been together 